Greetings, it is Maxo Diddley here, and today I am here with another Java tutorial to help you get an A in your coursework or exam. And today we're here with how to sort a 2D list string using Java. So before we go into anything, just to clarify what I mean by sorting um, a 2D list, we have got a list that contains a bunch of an a bunch of array lists. And these array lists are going to contain a bunch of strings. And in our case, we're going to be doing an ID, a name, and an age. And then we are going to sort these uh, records that contain ID, name, and age by a particular field or column, which could be the ID, the name, or the age. And depending on which one we specify, we will sort all of those records by that particular order. Using the data we have here, let's say we wanted to sort by name. Well, Bob, Bob's record would be the first one because Bob's the first in the alphabet. After it would be Errol, because that's the next one in the alphabet, then Eric, then Jeff. That's what we mean by sorting the data. If this is not what you're looking for, this tutorial might not be as useful to you. But we do go over comparators, so it could be quite useful. So let's get right into it. So in this line, we've just created our um, 2D string list. Then we've just added a bunch of data to it by doing list of records dot add new array list arrays dot as list. And then we do this. Obviously, I'm assuming when you're using this, you're going to be getting your data through maybe a file or user input. I'm just shoving some example data here. Then we're going to do system.out.println before sort. Then we're going to do a for loop for int i equals zero, i less than records dot size, i plus plus. Then we do system.out.println string.join, comma, lists of records dot get i. We're literally just printing out this entire list before the sort occurs then we do then we're going to call our sort function but we'll go into this later but we assign the output to our list of records which is the list we want to sort then we call for the exact same for loop again to print out our list but this time it will be sorted so let's get into how we're going to sort it so we can do public static list list string sort data list list string records and int col we are going to be returning a list a, a, a list list string which is just a 2d list a 2d string list and it's going to take in a 2d string list called records this is going to be our list list here and then we got int col and this is going to be which column we want to sort the data by it could be zero for the id one for the name two for the age Again, this is very flexible. You can have as many different fields as you want. You could have 20, and then you could specify here. But we've got three to keep it simple. Next thing we want to do is we want to create a comparator. So we can do comparator list string comparator equals new comparator list string. This can be a comparison function that we can pass in to our sort to actually sort the data for us. And you'll see in a moment how simple this is. And this is a comparison function we can pass in to a sort function, which will basically allow us to dictate how we want to sort our data. So it becomes very simple once we've actually set it up. A comparator is just a comparison function which imposes a total ordering on some collection of objects or elements. Comparators can be passed to a sort method such as collections.sort or arrays.sort to allow precise control over the sort order. That's the textbook definition if any of you guys wanted it. After that, we want to do at override. Then we want to do public int compare, list string c1, list string c2. Um, so overriding, if you're curious, is a feature in object-oriented languages that allows a subclass or a child class to provide a specific implementation of a method that is already provided by one of its superclasses or parent classes. When a method in a subclass has the same name, same parameters or signature, and same return type as the method in its parent class, then the method in the 
child or subclass is said to override the method in the parent class. So basically, we, there's a compare function we can use, and it's super close to what we actually want. However, we need to make slight modifications for our desire so we can just override the method. And so we're going to do public int compare. So it's returning an integer. Then we do list string c1, list string c2. These are going to just be the things we're comparing. After this, we're going to do a try catch statement inside. So try catch exception e. You know the deal. Try some code. If something goes wrong, execute what's in the catch statement. If nothing goes wrong, just carry on as normal. Inside the catch statement, we're going to do return c one dot get call dot compare to c two dot get call. So what's going on here? Well, firstly, we're doing a return statement, and before you think, but Max, if we do a return here, we're not going to be sorting this string list and you're correct however we are actually implementing this function inside this function a bit of functionception here but basically these return statements apply to this function we are overriding as opposed to this sort data function so don't worry about that and literally we're doing c1.getcall.compare to c2.getcall so column is specifying which column we want to use to do the comparisons and C1 and C2 just represent two elements of data we are comparing to determine which one should go first and which one should go second. And this will get called many times because it's a comparison function, so don't worry about that. But you might be thinking, but Max, why are we doing a try catch statement? Why is this going to be what happens if something fails? And I'll show you why. So if we were to sort these strings, these number strings, alphabetically, it won't be what you think. So if we were to sort these ages alphabetically via string comparisons, it would be 24, 25, 4, 20, 69. Can you see a problem here? Numerical order is different to string order. So we need to actually try and convert these to integers before we sort these ages. So, we're going to do something cheeky here. We are going to create two integer objects. And you might be thinking, but why are we doing integer objects? Because if we use the primitive data type of an integer, we can't use this really convenient compared to function. But if we make integer objects, which are basically integers, but with a bit more functionality, and they're objects as opposed to primitive data types, then we can use this fancy compare function. So. We're doing integer num1 equals integer dot pass in c1 dot get col. We're getting c1. We're going to get the correct column from c1. And then we're going to try and convert it to an integer. Then we do integer num2 equals integer dot pass in c2 dot get col. Again, we're going to c2, getting the appropriate column we want to check to do our comparison. And we're trying to convert it to an integer. If this is successful, then we're going to be returning num one dot compared to num two, which will determine which one is going to go first and which one's going to go second when we're doing the comparison. Hopefully that makes sense. And then if this fails, that means we are dealing with names or words. Therefore, we can do this comparison instead. Now, if your data has uh, floating point numbers, you might want to change this to floating point conversions and comparisons but we'll keep it as integers to keep this simple. But that's what's going on here. After you finish this comparator function, you just put a semicolon at the end. After that, we do collections.sort records, which is our 2D string list, and then comparator, which is the comparison we made here. And that's it. That, that, that's literally the one line of code that does all the sorting. Obviously, it's using our comparator, which is going to dictate and give the terms on how we want to sort the data. But it's basically just one line call once you have your comparator set up. And then we return records. So we're returning our sorted 2D string list to whatever we call the function. So if we go back to here, we do list of records equals sort data list of records. So we're passing in the 2D string list we want to sort. Then we do pass in the column we want to sort by. In this case, zero. So let's hit play because that's it for this tutorial. We're going to now prove that it works. So we're going to be sorting by the ID. 
So this is the data before we sort, and this is the data after we sort. As you can see, these records have been sorted by numerical order of the ID they have. That's good, but let's sort it instead by the name. As you can see, we got the before and after. They're sorted by names in alphabetical order. Now let's try the age. As you can see, they are sorted in numerical order of age going youngest to oldest. The fact someone can survive until 420 is very impressive, so we might need to delete that in the future, as that data might not be accurate. But that's it for this tutorial. Be sure to leave a like and a comment if you enjoyed, and be sure to, sub to subscribe as we're going to be going into even more ways to sort data, and we are going to go into more detail on comparators, and go into the more technical aspects and explain it in more detail for those of you who want a far more complicated learning experience. But we'll keep it simple. So thanks for being a great audience and I'll see you next time.